All right, so Apple dropped the first two episodes of Dark Matter. This is a sci-fi drama series that I'm really excited to talk about, so let's do it. What's up, Flick fans? If you saw my most anticipated summer projects, this made the list. I was excited due to the premise, and people love the book, so I have seen every episode of Dark Matter, but I'm really only going to talk about episodes one and two, and then give you my review. Are you looking forward to this? Is it more sci-fi or more drama? Oh, here we go. Oh, to my extraordinary wife, Daniela. I do not deserve you. So man is abducted into an alternate version of his life amid the mind-bending landscape of the lives he could have lived. He embarks on a harrowing journey to get back to his true family and save them from his most terrifying foe, himself. And so I read that and I said, all right, this looks great. And let's look at the cast, starting with Joel Edgerton, who is always good no matter the project, movie, or television. In this case, he's giving one to a couple of performances to where there have to be little distinctions in the characters that he is playing. But for the most part, he's playing the same guy, a guy who either loves his family and that decision that he made in that life or loves his job, his career. But part of him feels as if something is missing now. In the version of Jason that we are following in the first episode specifically, we'll start there. He decided to choose family over a more exciting and potentially successful career path. Yeah, of course, part of him, part of everyone who makes these types of decisions. There's a little regret in there, but he loves his family. He loves his wife. He loves his child. There are so many things about this decision that impacted his life for the better. When he's kidnapped in the first episode, and prior to that point, you're really just getting to know these characters. And so it's more of a family drama or more of just getting to know the family than anything else. So if you're expecting sci-fi action and intensity off the bat, you're not going to get that. So I feel like some people may watch episode one and be like, ah, I just really want something to happen. Then it happens. And then you're in on the mystery. Who did this? Why did they do it? <laughs> But that's not the true mystery of it all. The mystery is surrounding why this happened in the first place, how did it happen, and how does our character get back home to his version of reality. And we've seen plenty of movies and TV shows as of late that deal with the multiverse and different realities, different versions of characters, but this puts a nice little spin on it and more spins as we go. You don't get really any of the sci-fi craziness in the first two episodes other than obviously knowing that there are different versions of this reality, but all of the questions start to get answered in the latter half of this season. There are nine episodes and every episode gets more intense. So again, the first two episodes are dropping this week. If you watch it and you're like, yeah, I just don't. It's moving really slow. It does continue on that trajectory, and I would say it's more of a drama than a sci-fi series, with the sci-fi elements becoming more prominent as we go. But it does get more interesting. I will say, though, the first two episodes, giving us a lot of information about these characters, getting an idea as to how they operate and the relationships within there. But it's not just Joel Edgerton. Jennifer Connelly is here as well. And I love their chemistry. And it's fascinating to see how their chemistry changes depending on who is with her at the time. I also just love something as simple as giving us an audio cue and somewhat of a visual cue every time we go back and forth and bounce around between these realities. But as possibilities open up and the butterfly effect comes about of every decision I make is going to impact me, but not only me, maybe some other people beyond that. And so that concept becomes more prominent and thus you do have a really intriguing, interesting, maybe not as entertaining of a sci-fi series as something like a severance or something like a three-body problem, but one that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat nonetheless. Oh, this is just too good. And Alice Braga is really good as well. And again, I want this to be clear, and people who read the book should know this. Now, I'm curious, book readers, how does this compare to what you read? Is it the same? Does it follow a similar path? Is the human drama as prominent as it is in this show? I would really like to know. Again, it does take a bit to Build. And it took me a second to get intrigued. I was in it with the characters from the get-go, but uh, to be engaged and intrigued and for every episode to drop one moment or one sequence or an OMG towards the end of the episode, like, all right, 
What are you going to bring us in the next episode? I'm not sure how it's going to play weekly because there are, I don't want to say filler episodes, but some scenes or collections of scenes where it just kind of takes its time. And there are certain episodes where you get a lot of that. And so how is that going to play weekly? I binged it uh, in two days. So that's my problem. We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. But Jason's confusion and stress, and when he's first trying to figure out what in the world's going on, and that level of panic. But as you get further into the season, you're like, oh, the clock is is kind of ticking here, and it's that ticking time bomb of things can go awry at any moment, and so that adds to your kind of gripping the seat. Like, all right, we really have to get somewhere, and you start to feel those stakes further into the series, and it does resolve a lot of these questions that we have, man. I had plenty in the first two episodes, and I was right about a lot of my assumptions, but there were some where I was dead wrong, and when a show can do that, when a book can do that, that's really cool. Apple usually does a nice job with their TV shows in that regard. I do think the show is constructed in a visually dark and gritty way. Again, I said I like the sound design. You don't get crazy visual effects across the board. It's really a, a, as grounded of a sci-fi story as you can get, and uh, the more dramatic elements take center stage for the most part, but maybe I was lacking a bit in the visual department. There are certain scenes that are so dark, it's like, man, I need to turn every light off in this house just to see what's going on. But that's that's part of the tone that they're going for. So didn't love it, but I understand it. Before I give you my score, let me know your thoughts on the first two episodes of Dark Matter. And did you read the source material? I'm curious. If you want to support this video, dropping that like is the best way to do it. Stay tuned. Planet of the Apes tomorrow. Dark Matter deals with a familiar but fun sci-fi premise, yet the more dramatic elements take center stage. Edgerton and Connolly are excellent as the performances elevate the occasionally slow-moving storyline. The stress and slow-building intensity will inevitably have viewers locked in from week to week, but I'm curious, is that week to week schedule the best way to watch it? Or would you rather wait until the end and binge? That's the question. As you guys know, I had my most anticipated summer movies and TV shows on this channel last night, so go check that out. Dark Matter is on there. And what's the next most anticipated show that I'm watching? Let me know. You guys are the best, and come back tonight for my reaction for Planet of the Apes.